Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Why is it people think they're so special they don't have to follow the rules? Nicely done, OP. Lucky you have access to the breakers like that. Not the case in most places you don't own. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. You can't be loud without power. Let me introduce you to the tenant from hell, Sarah from now on. Sarah lives above us and is one of those aspiring musician types who's constantly playing her piano whenever she wants. Keep in mind that musical instruments are not allowed according to the lease. Unfortunately, management has not done anything about this. There's also a noise curfew for our building, which means no loud noises past 10 p.m. The first time she started playing her piano past 10, we left a note on her door the next morning, politely asking that she not play music so late since my boyfriend and I both have to get up early for work. Instead of taking a note of it and just trying to be more quiet when it's late, she went super passive aggressive and added sticky notes to our original note. For example, if the original note said, we need to be up early in the morning, she would put a sticky note under that sentence that said, I'm not even home most of the day. I don't even have a TV. There were probably around four or five notes stuck to our letter, which Sarah then handed to our on-site manager, OSM. We had a good laugh about it. After that, we didn't bother trying to contact Sarah and just contacted OSM when we had noise problems. It worked for a good while, but there were times when OSM wasn't available, which leads to this latest conflict. By now, Sarah's gotten enough complaints from other tenants that management started the eviction process, but Sarah filed something to either slow down or halt the eviction process altogether. I have no idea what she filed, OSM just happened to mention this in a text one day. I suppose she had a they can't make me leave mentality because Sarah started playing her piano well past the noise curfew and then denying she was doing anything wrong when OSM confronts her about it. Well now we take this into our own hands. I grabbed the broom and just hit the ceiling for five straight minutes, not the revenge, please keep reading, until Sarah stops. Finally, peace and quiet for the night. Boyfriend and I get into bed as it's around 11 p.m. when this happens. Time for cuddles before falling asleep, right? But no, it's not over yet. 30 minutes later, here's a loud knock on our door. We get dressed and open the door to two police officers who were sent to our apartment because of a domestic disturbance call. We at first thought they'd gone to the wrong apartment because there's a couple down the hall who have very frequent and very loud shouting matches. Nope, the caller specifically mentioned our apartment number and that there was a loud commotion and it scared her. It's obvious to the officers that there was no domestic disturbance, so they leave less than five minutes after knocking on our door. The instant we get back into bed, my boyfriend and I start thinking of our own petty revenge. Glitter bombs? Hmm, maybe. Sending actual poop to her mailbox? That might work. Super glue the locks? Could work, but Sarah would have to leave the apartment first. Then we have it. The next time Sarah makes any loud noise past 10 p.m., we're going to shut off her power. The box outside with no locks and all the units are labeled, so we wait. Three weeks go by and although she's playing her piano, Sarah's been pretty good at abiding by the noise curfew until last Friday. She's watching a movie. Remember when she said she didn't even own a TV? With her boyfriend and it's loud. I can hear every line of the dialogue as clear as day. The second it turns 10, my boyfriend goes out to the fuse box, there's a loud click and then it gets quiet. A minute goes by and Sarah yells, what happened? Followed by lots of shuffling around. She leaves, we enjoy the silence. The next day, OSM approaches us and lets us know that Sarah has a court date with the management company that owns the apartment building. Then yesterday, OSM texts us saying, Sarah has notified management that she's moving out. I have no idea how long it took to figure out how to get her power back on. Did we have a hand in her moving out? Probably not, but I like to dream. And our second story. Does he look like he works for them? This was years ago when I worked for a big walkie-talkie cell phone company repairing phones. Not your typical, I don't work here story, but bear with me. So generally, when a phone would come in that was beyond in-house repair and we didn't have a replacement for, we would request one be sent overnight via large brown shipping company. We would get several every day, generally around 9.30 a.m., half hour after we opened. 
Stupid B, referred to as SB, and her boyfriend, BF, come in at 10 a.m. Me. Hi, what can I do for you? SB. Yeah, you have a phone for me. Me. Oh, did we call? SB scoffs. No, you said it would be here today. Me. Oh, okay. What's the name? I'll check, but we haven't received shipment yet today. SB gives me the name, but you said it would be here today. Me. Yes, today has just started and goes until 6 p.m. tonight, as far as we're concerned here. Generally, we get our shipment in at 9.30 a.m., but he's late today. BF is obviously starting to get annoyed. Here we go, I think. SB, well, when is it coming? When? Me, I'm sorry, like I said, usually by 9.30, but he's late. Big Brown Shipping Company doesn't give us a time, just that it's out for delivery, which it is. I turn the screen to show her. SB, but when will it be here? BF chimes in, sweet effing Christ, SB. Does he look like he works for Big Brown Shipping Company? Does it have Big Brown Shipping Company logo on his shirt? No, he doesn't know. SB storms out. Boyfriend gives me a sorry bro look. I try not to laugh uncontrollably. Sometimes people were great. And our last story. Sure, call the landowner. So when I was 13, I was really into snowboarding, so every chance I got, I was out doing that in the winter. Though in recent years, I could do so in July. There was one huge hill that was open to anyone, everyone all year long, so they didn't cut trees or wreck the place. This hill was located on a plot of land in the woods that a few months prior to this event had gone from being for sale to bought by my uncles to keep it from being bulldozed. Nobody really knew these men were my uncles because we have different last names and my dad's family is huge. That comes up again later. One of the parents said that myself slash anybody who wasn't a baby in his sled had no right to be there as we were too big and violent to be using that hill and generally let the kids steal or otherwise damage the boards and skis or do things to drive everyone else away. I largely didn't care because when I went there, I just used my cheap $10 board that was built about as well as a plastic sled, so I didn't have to carry my bigger, better one across town. That, as you can imagine, pissed off these Karens more. I never really understood why they were so butthurt over it. They could take their kids sledding anywhere, and there were even public roads that were shut down in winter because they were too dangerous to drive on that people used all the time as sled spots. They were also much closer to home and safer because no tree line to collide with, fallen logs, or chances of coyotes deciding that kids were snacks. After about a week of them constantly nagging and complaining, I finally said, look, you can sled anywhere you want. Me? Because some a-holes decided to wreck property and trespass, I cannot even snowboard on my own property because the neighbors complained that I might break their fence. So unless I want to pay hundreds of dollars to go to some fancy resort, this is the only place I can snowboard. On a plot of land half a mile wide, I'm fairly effing certain we can all enjoy it. I didn't wait for a response, I just went on down the hill, swerving to avoid all the kids who think laying down in the middle of a place everyone is skiing, snowboarding, or sledding is a good idea, and thought that would be it. But as you can guess, I was wrong. I was never the best at stopping, so I stopped when I hit the trees, thankful that they were still rather bendy. Over the sounds of laughter and snow being shredded, I heard the Karen screaming and turned to see her at the top of the hill pointing at me and calling me every name in the book. Apparently, she called her husband, who confirmed they lived nearby, and said that one, I'd threatened her, two, I'd called her everything in the book, and three, I was a grown adult. At 13, I was maybe three foot nine and looked like I was 10. Her husband had to fight laughter when he saw me stomping back up the hill wearing a hot pink Barbie snowsuit and carrying a cheap monster energy slash black with electric green board under my arm. He asked what I'd said, I repeated it, and admitted I knew cursing was wrong but expressed how annoyed I was. He tried to calm his wife, but she screamed more and said, I'm calling the landowners. I smiled like the Cheshire cat and told her, go right ahead, I'll speak to them too. So she did, and she launched into a huge rant, very animated with lots of flailing and hopping similar to an angry hen. Finally, when she starts losing steam, I can hear one of my uncles saying, I'll be right there, sit tight. The crappy smile that spread across her face when she heard that, she sneered at me and said, I'm going to get you in so much trouble. Her husband had gathered the kids and told them to wait in the truck by then. 
He looked like he wanted to crawl into a hole and die of embarrassment. After about 15 minutes, a truck pulled up and out hopped my uncles. They came over and spoke to the woman. I could tell they didn't 100% believe her, but because this was their land, if anything happened, they'd be on the hook for it. She got loud again and demanded I be banned for life and all that. They looked around and asked her to point to the dangerous and disrespectful woman as clearly I was the only one snowboarding that day. She huffed and grabbed me, giving me a shake as she shouted, this B word right here. Despite it being the middle of January, I swear I heard crickets as the wheels and their heads turned. Knowing these men and how much they liked their own kid, they saw me. It was mostly to keep from yeeting this woman into the sun. Finally, one of them spoke. You mean our niece? Karen sputtered and tried to come up with some sort of response, but failed miserably. My uncles then gave her the choice. Leave now and come back in a couple of days. They'd drive by to make sure she stayed away or continue acting how she was, and they'd press charges on her to have her banned and charged with assault for grabbing me as well as being on the hook for any damages her kids caused to anybody's gear. Apparently, they'd been getting calls, but nobody knew her name, so the cops couldn't do anything. She huffed and stormed off, her husband following and looking like a beat dog. She never did come back. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.